That's what we're making today. It's easy and it's delicious. Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Hey, today it's another easy weeknight meal. I wanted to do this one to show you that sometimes when the pantry's a little bit low or you know when the refrigerator's getting down and it's getting toward the end of the month and maybe payday hasn't come yet, if you've got a well-stocked pantry, if you keep things well-stocked, sometimes you can pull out those canned goods and pull off a dish in short order that's easy to make and absolutely delicious. That's what I'm gonna show you today. This is gonna be a Southwestern style um, chicken casserole. Now, if the word casserole makes you run, don't let it. Watch what I put together here before you run away. Because, hey, if you like chicken enchiladas, you're gonna love this, all right? If you like that kind of food, oh, this is it right here. It's all wrapped up in one package. The right flavors, the right combination, and easy to make. Now, before I get into the ingredients, though, I would like to mention, look at my description box. That's where my recipes are. Uh, not the recipe for this or any other, but the link to them. That's satrotter.com. So the link to my website where my recipes are, also my merch, that's all there. Click that and you'll find me right there. And I do appreciate you doing that. Also, my social media is there, so please join me on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you very much. So come over, look at this. Let's get started making, because I'm hungry. The ingredients that I'm gonna be using today, looks like a lot of stuff, but it's all stuff right out of the pantry. I've got some chicken here. This is just chunky chicken, all right? Chicken breast. Some canned chilies, some canned diced tomatoes. I've got down here some grated cheese. That's cheddar cheese. I've got chicken broth. We have over here some uh, whipping cream or heavy cream, a red onion, I've got garlic, salt. Over here, these are tortillas, corn tortillas. Now, if you don't have corn tortillas, corn chips work every bit as well for this dish. Paprika, cumin, sage, black pepper. We have a little olive oil back there to get things up and running. Now, this is an easy to do thing. The hardest part is going to be dicing this onion and mincing up a little garlic. That's the majority of my work. The rest is opening cans and getting it up and in uh, cooking. So what we do is we do a preparation first, and then we build our casserole and put it in the oven and bake it up. All right, I decided I would do my garlic first. And what I'm gonna do is just take off the uh, scabs on the end of the garlic. And that's only because I just don't like to see that in my food. Um, now, to keep these from rolling around while I'm going to be mincing them, I'm going to crush each one of them. And be quite careful when you do something like this. You don't want to press into the edge of the knife and injure yourself. a nice nifty little video on how to mince garlic and you might want to take a look at that there we have a nice coarse mince and that will work I'm gonna go ahead and take it down just a little bit finer than that right there. And no, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> speeding up the video. It's just me. One of my brothers walked in one day, saw me doing that and said, oh goodness, he's got the trimmers. So anyway, there we have that. All right, now I'm going to move right on to my onion. Quick, easy to do. I want to half it and I want to quarter each of those and I want to dice these things. So that means a couple of downward cuts this way 
And then I need to turn them just like so. Repeat those downward cuts. All right, do that again. In case you're wondering what that does, it just gives you all of your nice little squares right there. All you got to do is cross cut them. All right, I've got everything prepped and ready to go. Very simple make, and you've seen the majority of the work right there. I did go ahead and use my can opener and I opened up these cans uh, so everything still has a lid on it but I just gotta use them okay so got my pot heating up and what I want to do is just start by cooking the onions a little bit I don't want them too firm while they're in my casserole and the casserole is not going to take a long time to cook it's a pretty easy item to, to do Now, I'm not putting the garlic in right now because if I try to cook the garlic with that onion, it's going to start browning. Garlic doesn't cook quite the same way onion does, all right? So you kind of got to give it a break, all right? All right. A little more olive oil. I'm going to put a lid on this. And we're going to let these onions just sit and sweat for just a little bit. Okay, now whenever I want to sweat onions, first I want a lid on it because I want steam to develop. And then the next thing is I'm going to lower my temperature a little bit to a medium-low flame. And that way I'm not cooking anything too quick. It's just about slow process on this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and drain these cans of chicken uh, from their juice. I'm going to keep all of the juice with the tomato and the chilies, and then we're going to be off and cooking shortly. All right. Now, these are just getting started. They will cook beautifully. Just be patient, and when they start looking a little bit translucent, that's when we go in with everything else. So as I'm bringing those onions up in temperature, I want to go ahead and get my pan ready here. Now there's a couple of ways I can, it's my oven beeping at me, a couple of ways I could do this. I can either do what I'm doing here, which is put some oil in the pan and then line the pan with either chips or corn tortillas. Or I can put down some of the material that I'm making, a thin layer of it. Uh, and let that be the bottom. So either way kind of works. When your corn tortillas are getting a little bit on the old side, this is probably one of the best uses in the world for them, is building casseroles with them. They make a nice layer, they give you a beautiful corn flavor, and it just sort of makes the casserole come together. Okay, I'm gonna take a look. Yeah. Now, I'm getting just slight caramelization. Not much, just a hair. And it's just telling me, lower your heat just a little bit. That's all it's telling me. So I'm gonna turn it down to a low. Now it's not the lowest I can get it. It's not like on a low simmer, but it is a low flame. And I'm gonna give that just a moment more and then we're up to putting the rest of the ingredients together. Okay. Now those onions are starting to turn just a little translucent, just starting. Okay. Beautiful, right? And they've softened a bit. That's just what we're wanting. Next thing, garlic. And the reason I want that garlic in now, I want the garlic to actually flavor the oil that I have in this, all right, and, and get dispersed real well that way. That flavor will then 
blend through the rest of the dish very quickly and easily. So the rest of it just goes in. Sometimes those old chilies are a little bit difficult to get out of the can, so. This is gonna need some liquid in it and I need more heat. So I'm gonna start with some chicken broth. I'm just gonna put in probably a couple cups worth there. Doesn't have to be just a whole lot. There we go. It's looking nice. Okay, just until I got a little liquid covering the other ingredients. And I want to go ahead and put in that pepper and the other spices. Okay, this is looking really good. Now I could leave it just like that, but I guarantee you it's gonna get a whole lot better if we do that right there. Oh yeah. Now that was about a cup, between a cup and a cup and a half. Well, there we have it. This is the guts of our, of our beautiful casserole. Not hard to do. The whole idea here is I'm gonna bring this up in temperature then we're going to ladle in some of that over here. We're going to put some more tortillas in there. I'm going to put more of this in there. We're going to top it with cheese and then get it baking. And it's just that simple. So it's a matter of heat, heat, heat. And that's what it's doing now. All right. This is starting to bubble just a little bit and it's steaming, which means I brought it up in temperature and that's what I wanted to do. I do that just before I assemble this because it, well, it's just the way I do it, folks. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> and also, if you feel that some of the chunks of chicken are too big, you can always break them just like so. They break apart real easy. Okay, so don't be afraid to go at that that way. Starting to look really nice in there. I think it's time for us to layer on some more of these little fellas. Now remember, as I said, you can use regular corn chips for this if you choose to do it that way. And it's not a problem. And one of those just broke See there? There it is, right back where it belongs. <laughs> Talk about a cool way to do something, huh? Now, if you want, there's a lot of other ways you can top this also. You could add corn chips to this. You could uh, put some panko crumbs over the top of it. That won't hurt it. Uh, so there's a lot of options as far as different things that you can do just to add a really cool, good quality topping. I'm thinking, hey, just a little cheese is good enough for me. This is an easy weeknight meal. And I didn't want it to get any more involved than it already has. All right. All right, so how long to cook it for, all right? Well, the cheese will be fully melted. It's going to be firmed up a little bit, and that's what we're looking for. So it can stay in there as long as necessary until those conditions are achieved. Usually 30 to 45 minutes most of the time for things like this for me. Um, that's what I'm gonna count this one as. I'm gonna start the count at 30 minutes. We'll take a look at it and see where we go from there. Right. All right, so that has been cooking. It's now browned on top, it's a little bit soupy on top too. 
that's not a problem. I'm just waiting for the rest of that to firm up. Now, when it starts looking, you see down here, the bubbling is stopped in the lower part down here. That's when it's starting to get firm. And of course, you're gonna want it to cool down a little bit, because right now it's just unbelievably hot. So, I'm gonna give it some time to cool, a resting period. I'm gonna restart my timer here. And so you will know that was in the oven for about, um, if I remember right, that's 45 minutes, 45 or 46, somewhere in there. So came out beautiful, nice browning on top. I get that smell just like if I was having enchiladas and it's just fantastic. So I'm looking forward to this. Well, we now have this in from the oven. Oh, look at that. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. The quantity of everything that I've used today, let's start right over here. I used almost 30 ounces of this chicken. Now that it comes in these uh, 9.75 ounce cans. So roughly 30 ounces of that, roughly uh, 12 ounces of diced green chilies, 15 ounces of uh, petite diced tomatoes, a couple of cups of your chicken broth, just depending on whether we're making it soupy or a little more firm and a cup to a cup and a half of the heavy cream i've got eight ounces of cheddar that i started with here one medium onion a couple of tablespoons of minced garlic enough of the tortillas to line your pan or your your uh, dish a couple of times as you've seen and then a teaspoon of salt a teaspoon of black pepper a teaspoon of sage one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of the paprika, and that equals delicious. Let's take a look at the finished product. It was an easy thing to make. All right, now this has had 15 minutes of cooling down time. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a beautiful, Beautiful little casserole. I'll tell you what, easy to make, absolutely delicious. This is something you really need to try if you've never done something like this. Give it a shot. Yeah. Mm. You know, I knew this was going to be delicious the minute I put it together. I've done so many of these types of things. And I didn't have a recipe here. I just started throwing stuff together. Okay. And sometimes when you do that, you get magnificent results. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm definitely going to enjoy this. <laughs> it's so good. Please uh, enjoy this recipe. Take a look in that description box below. Click on the website satrotter.com get the recipes that i have there and folks thank you so very much for watching i do appreciate that and please definitely have a good day oh like subscribe you know thank you